Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we are covering the making of the pleated black and white striped underskirt for the magpie costume. As you can see, I have already finished it. Uh, so we are gonna get right into the video because there's a lot to cover and a lot of patterning happening. I started out by first taking the front and side front pattern pieces of the petticoat from my last video. I liked the shape and the fit, so I knew these patterns would adapt well. I combined the two pattern pieces together by aligning the seams and tracing around the pattern. Next, I measured the waistline and counted approximately how many pleats appear in the illustration in the same area. I counted around eight pleats, so I divided my waistline by eight to figure out how wide each pleat should be at the top. Then to figure out the width of the bottom end of the pleats, I divided the hem measurement by eight. This allowed me to just connect the top and bottom lines together to get my black and white stripes. I checked the angle of the lines by holding it up to my form. I made sure to very clearly label and number the panels because I did not want them to be sewn together out of order. These lines were then cut apart completely so that I could insert more paper to create the turn backs of each pleat. I fought with the paper a little bit and then eventually got a system down. The purpose of this entire process is so that I can have a unique pattern for each stripe and allow me to perfectly hide the seam lines of each panel within the inside fold of the pleats. I am only going to show you this step for a couple of the pleats because trust me, this took forever and took up lots and lots of paper. the skirt to behave like a normal flared skirt, so I decided to keep the grain line of each panel consistent as if it were all sewn together as one piece. This means I used up a lot more fabric when I was cutting it out in the end, but I ended up having the majority of the skirt on the back half cut on the bias, which allowed it to gracefully drape over the bustle. For the back panel, I draped a length of muslin to get a basic shape, matching the grain line direction at the side seam and tracing in the waist. I then transferred this piece of pattern paper and created the panels the same way I created them for the front. Once I had the front and back halves of the skirt done, it came time to cut the panels apart. This footage ended up being pretty boring as I just cut them apart on the inside and sorted the pieces by color. Then it came time to actually cut out all of the panels in fabric. I used a black sateen from Joann's and I used a white sateen lining also from Joann's. Each panel had to be cut out individually with added seam and hem allowances. Also, this took forever, so these are just some highlights. Once everything was cut out, it was a matter of stitching each panel together in their correct order. As I mentioned in the intro video to this project, this project is only historically inspired, so if my serge seam finishes make you cringe, you can fight me because I, honestly, I ain't got time for felling all these long seams. Once a panel was stitched in, I formed the pleats while the fabric was laying flat on a table and then used large pad stitches to base the pleats together down the entire length of the skirt. This would allow me to press the pleats more easily and get an idea of the overall shape. Again, this took forever, so I'm only showing a little bit of it here. Once the panels were all in, I created a placket for the center back opening. The placket was made by cutting two strips of white sateen, finishing the edges, and stitching them along the upper edge of the center back panel. The placket pieces overlap each other and are completely hidden on the inside. I sewed three large metal snaps along the inside edges. Next it came time to permanently sew in the pleats on the upper edge and finish the waistband. I created the waistband in the same manner as the petticoat and was common for Victorian skirts. Rather than encasing the bulky pleated edge of the skirt within a waistband, a separate thinner band is whip stitched to a folded edge. I created the waistband from a strip of starched cotton folded the raw edges inwards and top stitched close to the edge. Then the waistline of the skirt was turned under and whip stitched to the tape by hand. Here you can see a little bit of a close up of what this looks like once it's all pressed out flat. Finally, for the hem, I stitched a wide band of stiff webbing to the right side, easing it in around the curves. This would help the pleats retain their shape and give some structure to the hem. The tape was turned to the inside and fell down by hand.
Once the banding was in, I put the skirt back on the form and used lots of steam and my hands to sculpt the pleats in place. And that's it. I'm really, really happy with how this skirt came out. It is so full. I have lots of twirl in it. And it's actually really cool. And I, I think I'm probably gonna be wearing it as a normal skirt. Um, maybe not without the bustle, since that's a bit overkill. But anyways, I really liked how this came out and I can't wait to get started on the next part of the project. Thank you all for watching. If you like this, please give it a like and a comment. Hit that bell notification if you wanna see more. And I will see you in my next video. Are you being adorable? Think you can sit on my butt? Ready? Go on the bum. Can you do it? Go down the back. There you go. Perfect. Let's see. Yeah, good job.